YouTubers, we're having another issue with the van. I let go of the steering wheel. Pulls to the right <laughs> really hard. Um, I had this issue the other day, just driving to the store. If I actually slam on the brakes, it pulls to the left really hard. <clears throat> I don't even have to slam on the brakes that hard. I have to fight it whenever I'm coming to a stop. So what's going on is the right side brake caliper is locked up. Whether that's how I can smell the brakes. I've only been driving it for like two miles just trying to get it back to a place where I can work on it. <clears throat> I had this issue the other day. I parked it, drove the Jeep for a while, and finally all the parts came in to get this repaired. So we're going to get this repaired tonight. Um, but just thought I'd show you the issue if you guys ever have the issue. Burning brakes smells terrible, and you will smell it. Whether you'll smell it while you're moving or when you come to a stop, you'll smell it. Um, yeah, you can see. Let go, pulls to the right. If I hit the brakes, it pulls hard to the left. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Let's get this thing fixed. What I ended up ordering were new brake hoses, which is very common for those hoses to look fine on the outside but be actually collapsed on the inside and work like a one-way valve. They'll let pressure through, but they won't return the pressure back to the master cylinder. So they'll hold pressure in that brake uh, caliper. Or the brake caliper itself just has a ridge line in it somewhere and it's rusted through. Or not rusted through, but rusted up to where the cylinder doesn't want to return when you let go of the brakes. So either or, and uh, we're gonna get both replaced. If you've overheated your brakes badly enough, um, it's a good idea to just replace your calipers because they have been overheated and most likely damaged. Another symptom is it won't, uh, if you put it in neutral, it won't roll. This will roll, but if I put it in gear, it actually won't go forwards unless I put my foot into it a little bit and you can hear the right side brake creaking when I start taking off. Ooh, those brakes smell nasty. Let's get this fixed. All right, YouTubers. Today, what we are going to be doing is changing your brake caliper and brake hoses. What's going on? As you can see, I can't push this side at all. This side is locked up. Ah, there we go. I can push it if I push real hard. Brakes are locked up on this side. I wasn't able to confirm whether it was a brake caliper issue or if it was a brake hose issue, but they're both from 1985 and I figured it would just be a good idea to replace both at the same time. It was cheap enough. I got the parts off Rock Auto and uh, yeah, I ended up just buying new calipers and hoses at the same time. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's get the wheel off. All right, we got that wheel off. I didn't drive it very long with it locked up and it looks like it hasn't done any damage or glazing to the brake rotor. And the shoes, rather the pads, look like they're still okay. So we're gonna go ahead and just start to disassemble here. I'm gonna use a 12 millimeter on the bottom side bolt on the caliper to swing it up and out of the way to get the pads out of it. <clears throat> it's on the back side. Actually, give me one second. I'll see if I can get a good shot for you guys of where that is. All right, so around the back side here, it's a size 12 millimeter. This guy right here, you pull this guy out, and this whole caliper will actually slide up and away. All right, 
So that usually slides just up and out of the way easily. But since this caliper is frozen in place, I'm gonna use a pry bar. Just like that. Remove these shoes. The back shoe has definitely seen a little more heat. Oh, about the same. They, the, the shoes are definitely glazed over. You can see that shininess on them. We're gonna have to break that shininess off before we reinstall them so they function correctly. Whether you do that with a wire wheel or sandpaper, you just definitely don't want to be breathing in that dust at all. Even though they're asbestos free, they're still very, very fine particles that your body doesn't know what to do with. So it's best to just protect yourself. I'm using autofocus today on the camera. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. Looks like it's working pretty good so far. On the backside, gonna have to get the other camera out again. Let's see. Okay, on the back side back here, you can see one of them right there. There are nuts. There's three of them that you gotta remove. There's one on the front side over here that has a cotter pin through it. That is the only one that you don't need to remove. That one doesn't get removed. This one, that one, and the one below. That guy, they all get removed. And it is a size 17 millimeter. I, some of them, they're really tight and you have to use a ratchet. Well, all of them I had to use, ended up having to use a ratchet on, but trying to get enough. Yeah, there go the autofocus. Let's have you focus here. I'm gonna lock that out. Since we're really not moving that much. I'm gonna put a wrench on the end of my ratchet just to get that extra, uh, extra leverage. Comes the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the others. So I've got this one, I'm working on this one now. i do the same thing. If you got a little cheater bar or something to put on there. Handle to a bottle jack works rather well. An older bottle jack anyways. The new bottle jacks seem like they've got really thin handles. Like most other things. And then that last one. And notice I'm using the ratchet all out the same side. I'm getting these all to break loose. While you're working on stuff, one thing to keep in mind, protect your knees. Don't be kneeling on concrete. Have something, even like this is a, I think a Mac, this is actual Matco knee pad. You don't have to pay a lot of money for them. You can go to the garden section of Walmart or wherever you shop and find them there just fine. Whether they're in green or blue or black. Keep your knees protected. Don't strike the palm of your hand. You're gonna cause yourself carpal tunnel later in your life. Using an electric ratchet to get the rest of these out. You can see that bracket just moved. And then the last one, which is like the hardest one to get to. And that one doesn't like to let go of the electric ratchet, so I usually just leave it there or struggle with it to get it off. I'm gonna put this guy up out of the way. Again, that is a 17 millimeter. The bolt on here was a 12 millimeter. On the new calipers, it is a 13 millimeter. Hopefully you guys can see all right. Oop. Sorry about that. One of the next purchases I make 
for this camera is a wide angle. <laughs> lens that I'm using almost acts like a telephoto, but it's the smallest lens that that camera came with. All right, so we've got this guy off. One thing we need to do next is break loose the brake hose from the brake line. And then we just continue on until we get everything undone. We've got a drain pan to catch all the brake fluid. You can hear the bullet bite going by. Tool you'll need to break the brake line away from the brake hose is one of these guys. Uh, you can see that very well. There you go. It's like a box end wrench, but it's open on the, just the one, uh, one flat. You're going to need one of those to break this loose. Don't try to use a regular box end wrench. Yes, this is huge. Um, it's only really gripping on two edges and you will strip out the, your brake line. Now, I live in a part of the Rust Belt. <laughs> and this van is very rust free. I'm pretty sure it came out of California. I've also kept it very washed in the winter time. So that just broke loose. Let's bring you in so you can see. Before I go ahead and break that line loose completely and start leaking fluid everywhere, I'm gonna get the new caliper set up. We got some Ray Bestos brake lines. Here's your part number. Got these on closeout. Oh, you can't see it. It's BH36881. Um, like I said, I got them on closeout with Rock Auto. I think they were like three or four, three or four bucks a piece or something like that. Gotta love closeout with Rock Auto. Gonna go ahead and tighten this guy down. Just putting the hose in place. Using a 11 16 wrench. I'm sure there's a metric size that would fit too, but this is the first wrench that I grabbed and it fit. Not like loosely either, or not loosely either. It fits nice and tight. snugged. I'm going to tighten it down. I'm going to tighten it, but not destroy threads. Let me just get a feel for it here. All right, it's nice and tight. That caliper is ready to be installed. Caliper and, and bracket. Now you could just replace the caliper and keep the original bracket in place, but this came with the kit, with the bracket and everything, so I'm gonna replace it all as one. All right, so here's your, where your metal brake line goes into your rubber brake hose. You've got a clip that holds it in right here. I usually just grab it with a pair of needle nose, slide it back and forth until it's part of the way out easily accessed. You know it's going to move now. You're going to want to break loose that line on the back side with a 10 millimeter. Oh, I can't remember what these are called. I'll put it up on screen. Break that guy loose. It will start to drip. You want to try to catch as much of the drippage as you can. Once you break it loose, I will grab a regular wrench because the regular wrenches are a little faster. Um, Excuse my head for a second. All right, now I should be able to get off with my hand. Brake lines on this are in great shape. Not rusty at all. All right. Where are my paper towels? This is about the time that you want to find your paper towels. Next step. 
break this guy completely free. There we go. The clip comes off, we will be reusing that clip. This guy comes off now, like so. Get that guy out of the way. Again, still not sure if it was the brake hose or brake caliper to blame. I'm just gonna replace everything. Not loading, not necessarily loading the parts cannon, just making sure it's safe. I mean, it's your brakes for heaven's sakes. You don't wanna, don't wanna play any games with your brakes. All right. Going to slide this guy up in place. Now your hose, you don't want it to twist it at all. You can kind of see that line on it. The line kind of goes all the way across, to, or all the way up the hose. You want to just keep that line as straight as possible. Um, any twists that you put into the brake hose is just a bad idea. Plain and simple. I'm trying to do this without sweeping in a whole bunch of dirt into the braking system either. You want to make sure no dirt goes in here and no dirt goes in there. You can see both of those. Yep, you can. Sorry if it's a little out of focus. I currently have the focus locked. Now it's just a matter of getting these bolts to line up just right. Screwing them in by hand. The top two bolts are the same. The bottom one is longer on both sides. Now I am doing this job on both sides. I've already done it on the driver's side. We are currently doing the passenger side where the issue actually was. Again, just preventative maintenance, stopping it from happening on the opposite side. Trying to catch all that brake fluid that we can. found it easier to put the brake hose on first though before actually putting the caliper onto the vehicle. The new hose seems just a smidge short. I wish it was a smidge longer. I'm sure if I ordered it for like the four-wheel drive van it probably would have fit a little better because I do have a lift kit on this. go through as it's dripping we want to hurry as quickly as possible because if you let it drip all out it will run your reservoir dry and if you run your reservoir dry then you add a whole bunch of air into your braking system and air is compressible so when you try to push your brakes and it's trying to compress fluid, it's not going to compress fluid because there's air in the system. It's going to compress air and you're not gonna have any brakes. Same way I loosened them, putting something on for some leverage, really tightening these guys down. These are nice, big, thick bolts. <laughs> Hold your braking system together. You want them nice and tight. If you got one of those nice expanding ratchets, that would work beautifully for this situation. They sell them at Harbor Freight and other places. I've got one, but I don't got one with me. So we use this method. All right, all three of those are tight. Now this is the tricky part. Where did I put that clip? It's right in front of me, right here. 
Those lights are getting hot. Got some nice bright lights for you guys so you guys can see what's going on. So about this point, the uh, audio ended up dying on my receiver. So just going to do a bit of a voiceover here for you guys. So what I'm trying to do here is trying to get that hose stretched up into place, trying to get that into the bracket, trying to get that uh, seated firmly in that bracket so we can get that clip on the back side and really struggling with it. That hose is just a smidge short. I think they're stock size. The old ones are probably just stretched out. Still really couldn't get it, so I ended up grabbing a pair of vice grips. Um, and that those pair of vice grips, not terribly tight on the metal part, uh, but that was the trick. Pulling it up, twisting it back and forth until it kind of locked into place. I was able to slide that pin into place, and it worked out quite well. So, as you can see, I'm still dripping lots of fluid and uh, using a pry bar as a hammer. <laughs> um, <laughs> now trying to get that brake line threaded into the backside. You definitely want to do it by hand. Thread it all the way down by hand. If you use tools to thread it in, you'll most likely cross-thread it. It's incredibly easy to do Let's these fittings. On the camera die. Got a charging now, though. I think it's charging. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead. So I got that guy put on. This guy threaded on way too easy. The other side took like 5-10 minutes to thread on. And there goes my audio again. So, like I was saying, the other side took quite a while to get threaded in by finger because I didn't want to cross-thread it. It really tried to cross-thread on the opposite side, but um, also right there, it looked like I was tightening it down really, really tight, but I promise I'm not. Always looks like it on camera, though. Just looking at some instructions here. Read them out to you. Um, but yeah, that's all put together. Next step is going to be bleeding out the Brake caliper. All right, I keep losing my audio, but we're just gonna use the audio from the camera now. It's not gonna sound quite as good, but at least we'll be able to hear it. I'm gonna have to dub over a lot of this video. So what we're gonna do, just take a wire brush and break off this glazing. You can see I've already done a little bit of it. Right there. I'm just gonna do it like this. Of course, depending on your situation, your pads might be too far gone to do this. Mine, I did not drive them for very long at high speeds at all, so I'm able to break that glazing off just by scuffing them up. I hope you can see the difference there. Shiny, not shiny. Shiny, not shiny. It's working great. Go ahead and break the glazing off that brake pad. We're gonna get them installed and then we're gonna get the brakes bled. And we just gotta pump it enough to fill that caliper up and then start bleeding out the air. But I am gonna quickly look underneath all the brake hoses that I can see, brake lines are either the metal ones. They'll look fine. So go ahead and just keep pumping. See if we can get anything out of that. I should be able to hear it on the opposite side if it starts bleeding out. All right, so what I was talking about there for just a split second, I was having a bit of a hard time getting fluid up to that, or rather down to that brake caliper. So, uh, Went through, made sure everything was unplugged. I thought the leader may have had an issue. I blew through that, no issues. So went ahead and just jumped back in the van, topped off the reservoir and kept pumping. And eventually, you'll see here in just a minute, you can see a little right there. Finally started getting some fluid through that hose. Uh, I really do think that there's just a ton of air inside that reservoir or not the reservoir, but the uh, caliper, so. 
Yep. You keep going, and we'll get this thing bled out and get it working again. There we go. Something just released. Not sure what the cause of that was, but it's flowing now. So, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up. Snug it up. Now, a step that I like to do when I'm doing brakes, new, old, whatever, is to take some sort of lubricant, PB Blaster, I've got some super slick, slick stuff, and spray inside the nipple for the brake bleeder. You get all the brake fluid out of there, but you also leave behind some lubricant to stop it from rusting or doing weird things. And helps chase away the, the uh, corrosion from it as well. Put your cap back on. You're good to go. Side shouldn't be locked up anymore. It's hard to turn, but I think that's pretty well normal. Oh, the steering on this thing needs some help. <laughs> There's a lot of play. I know what it is, too. I'm waiting for parts to come in. You've got to love it. Well, now all you got to do is to mount your wheel back up again. Tighten these guys down. gun doesn't have a whole ton of torque that's why I like to use them and then go and hit them with a torque wrench but I'm gonna save you the uh, monotony of doing the torque wrench so let's go ahead and get the rest of it all assembled and we'll go for a quick joy ride I mean test drive all right left side pretty good Right side. A little tighter. A little tighter on the right, if I'm honest. I'll have to take it for a drive, though, and see what it does. Well, after the last section of the video, I've put about 200 miles on it, and no issues. It's working great. Brakes feel nice and tight, like they should. Very happy. Sweet. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you later. Bye.